1972, I took a philosophy course to fulfill my requirements for graduation. So I said, I think I can pull this off. And I came up with an answer. And my answer was, you are what you do. I came up with that answer because I wanted to lead you back in. I wanted to get you interested in my central question, what is the role of business and the answer to create positive social change. So you have to bear with me a little bit because I'm trying to draw you in with a very complex, big question, and TED conferences are all about sharing big ideas. So I said to myself, what do people do? I said, well, make it simple. They sleep for eight hours, they work for eight hours, and they get to live their life for eight hours. Now, I said I didn't really know much about this, so I decided I have to go back in time. I have to figure out how we got here. I said, let's go back to the cavemen. Again, I know nothing about cavemen. So I said, I think I'm going to pretend. They used to sleep for eight hours. And then for 16 hours, they had to survive. So cavemen were really sleeping for eight hours, and they were surviving for eight hours. They didn't divide things into eight-hour blocks like we do today. So I said, what happened? I said, nothing really happened. What really happened is we've drawn an imaginary line between our work life and our life outside of work. So today I want us to explore that 16 hours when we're not sleeping. Explore what is the opportunity for those six hours to make our life have more meaning. So owning my own business, one thing I've learned is business is in business to make a profit. Their number one pursuit should be making a profit. If you're not good at making a profit, you're not going to be in business, and you're not going to create social change. So how do businesses do this? Well, they do this by making products. Excuse me, I'll go back and say, I believe this is the role. This is what excites me. This is where my passion is. So how do business do this? They make products that overtly help the society. They also provide services that do the same thing. So let's think about that. There's a, a person named Doug Hall who talks about to be successful in business and have the great products and services. Your service has to have, be dramatically different. People need to have a reason to believe it'll work. And it has to have an overt benefit. So if you work for a company that makes a product or provides a service that has an overt benefit that creates positive change, you're partway there. So let's think about some products. Obviously, solar panels, windmills, fair trade chocolate. We all need chocolate. How about some services, doctors, nurses, and some lawyers? <laughs> but what I want to talk about today is the model of business making an impact with their human capital. I'd like businesses to figure out how to focus on that 16 hours a day when people are not sleeping. So business is great. Business spends lots of time on policies and programs to figure out how to get the most out of what they consider their most valuable asset. And the world-class companies, these are the things that they do. They focus their workforce focus effort on individual development. They focus on interpersonal relationships. And they focus on a sense of purpose. The best businesses in the world that are focusing on these three things are making a difference. And they do this by coaching people. They do this by assigning, and assigning training for people to go to. They give people on-the-job assignments to practice things and get better at things. And they also are very good at setting a clear vision out into the future and then figuring out how to engage all their employees to reach that vision. Dan Pink, who has a very popular TED Talk, really wants business to focus on autonomy, mastery, and purpose. So focusing on these workplace uh, efforts is really nothing new. So if you could be saying to me, so Ted, big deal. We get this. This is nothing really do. But what I want to propose is the difference that I see or the problem I see is most businesses put all this effort into these three things in the eight hours you're at work. All the efforts is to figure out how they can do these things better, which they do a great job doing these things better. What they do, though, is draw this imaginary line. You've got your eight hours of work, you go home, and you get to live your life. They draw this imaginary line because they think that's 
what people are looking for. And I'd like to propose that's not true. I'd like to propose this ignores reality and does not serve, serve the individual, the business, or our society's best interest. I've got two examples of how we know business is doing better at this. One is volunteering. Lots of companies today create volunteer programs where they get all their company, company employees together, they go out and do great work in the community. Studies have shown that those companies that are doing that, people in their eight hours away from work are volunteering more now than they did before. So learning and having the ability and capacity to volunteer is something they learned at work, but they're now doing more of it in the eight hours when they're not at work. Another obvious example is wellness programs. Health insurance goes through the roof. Businesses know we can't afford it. So they say we've got to do something about it because we're putting the bill. And what do they do? They say, let's work on wellness programs. And they obviously know they can only do, do so much with the employee for the eight hours, but the most successful companies are really impacting people outside of work. The eight hours where they're not at work, quitting smoking, running, healthy lifestyles. So the opportunity is there, and we've seen it work before. For me, it's no big surprise that the same things that's going to make somebody better at work is going to make somebody a better mother, father, sister, brother, friend, little league coach. So I want to encourage you. I want to open this conversation that says that we want to erase this line. We want to get rid of this imaginary line. We want to help people see that this line doesn't exist. And there's actually a mirror image between what you do at work and what you do living your life. I want to come up with a little example here um, because I think the idea is for business to make it more obvious, help people make the connection. So what I want to talk about is a, an employee named Bill. And Bill sits down with his supervisor once or twice a year and says, let's, uh, let's figure out, Bill, how we can make you better at work. Bill says, yep, that we, that's what we do here. But this, this company gets it. They don't believe in this imaginary line. I'm leaving this here because I know you don't believe me. But I'm going to give you this story about a supervisor and a business that gets it. And he says to Bill, Bill, here's this cool book, FYI, for your development, Lominger, 67 competencies. They've proven these are 67 things. If you get better at this, you're going to be better at work. Bill goes, cool, let's look at this. Yeah, I'm unskilled at some, I'm skilled at some, I'm moderately skilled at some. The supervisor says, hey, Bill, let's through, look through this. What do you want to work on? He said, looks like I want to work on adapting to differences. I'm not very good when I see somebody do something different than I would of accepting it and adapting to that difference. What if that supervisor said, geez, Bill, I've noticed that at work. Does that show up any other place in your life? Well, yeah, it shows up in, uh, when, workers with it, when I work with these other departments at work. Oh, that's cool, Bill. How about any other place? Bill says, well, as a matter of fact, it actually happens at home. What if that supervisor had a respectful communication with that employee, a trusted, respectful communication, could say, what are you willing to share with me? Are you interested in working on that? He says, well, actually, I have a teenage son. I'm not really great at adapting to differences in the way he approaches his life right now. We've sort of lost our way to communicate. So what if that supervisor said, you know, Bill, let's develop, let's make a plan, a personal development plan for you that's going to help that relationship, that's going to help that living your life when you're not at work. What are the chances that Bill would be genuinely committed to working on that improvement? What are the chances of him getting better at it? What are the chances that Bill realizes I'm better at that in a very difficult situation? Seems easy at work. If I could figure out how to deal with my teenage son, I certainly could figure out how to deal with that person in the other department. What do you think the retention rate would be for that company who had a, a, a relationship with their employee that they were racing this line? So I believe... The opportunity is actually to erase this line and start helping people make the connections. See that this line can be erased so that people are making a positive social change. Imagine that Bill decides to work on these things. He's going to be better with his self-esteem at work and self-esteem outside of work. His self-confidence is going to grow all 16 hours of the day. He's going to understand what motivates him. 
He's going to understand how to communicate and listen and deal with people better. I believe if we allow people to work on projects and we talk to people about their life outside of work and how they can make positive change in their family, with their friends and their communities, they'll be more engaged and be learning and growing 16 hours a day. I call this strategy the inside out. It's about business being healthy and creating healthy communities and their businesses working from the inside out. Make no mistake about it, this is not having more company picnics on weekends. This is about striving and declaring that there's a better way to do business. This is about making sure you're investing time, energy, and money into helping your employees be better at work and at home. This isn't entirely new. There's some people that get this, but I think there's a long way to go. This is a quote that I really like from uh, Arnold Hyatt, the CEO of StrideRight. You can't run a healthy company in an unhealthy society for long. Seems to make a lot of sense to me. So I want to finish by painting a picture or having you imagine something in your head. I want you to imagine that Bill, my friend Bill here, he lives in a, in a city or a little town with 1,000 to 5,000 people in it. Bill works for this company with 50 to 200 people in it. This company is world class, world class at their workforce focus. And this company gets it. There's no imaginary line. In fact, it's the furthest thing from imagination. They're encouraging people to figure out how to be healthy 16 hours a day. Imagine that a fire is lit inside Bill, and a fire is lit inside 100 to 200 Bills in that community. So that they're constantly trying to improve themselves as an individual, improve their interpersonal relationships, and have a sense of purpose. So I imagine, when I imagine that, I think that's going to be a pretty amazing town. I also imagine I'd like to work for that company, and I'd like to live in that town. Thank you.